thank you very much, Maya, for the introduction and thank you for having me today. It's basically a great privilege. I wanted to start with uh, introducing myself, basically. So I'm the group content manager uh, at Odeon Cinemas Group, and I have a master's in film studies. Uh, when I came to London, I basically had a plan to find a job in one of the cinemas. And when I actually arrived, I had a map with cinemas from London actually marked on that map. And I was very determined to, to find the job. I was actually very lucky uh, because I uh, got the job at OD in Leicester Square, uh, where the international and European premieres take place. So I was extremely pleased about that. And then I um, grew up with the company, worked my way up, managed a few cinemas in and outside of London. But considering my uh, passion and my university uh, background, I was very keen on navigating my career even closer uh, towards films. And that's when I moved to the part, to film department in the support office. Uh, and first, for the first few years, I worked in the UK team where I had ability to make direct decisions about the lineups of UK cinemas. And then following AMC acquisitions of Odeon Cinemas Group, I moved to uh, the group role because I was very keen on developing my knowledge uh, about cinema industry in other European uh, countries. Now, uh, so Odeon Cinemas Group is Europe's largest exhibitor with nine European territories and are market leaders in several major markets. What's worth mentioning as well is that Odeon um, Cinemas Group is also a wholly owned subsidiary of AMC in states, forming the largest exhibitor globally. And my role of the group content manager involves overseeing specialist programming across all cinemas uh, of Odeon Cinemas Group in nine countries. And that includes foreign language cinema, alternative content, a catalog and special screening opportunities. I'm the point of contact for pan regional content suppliers and I help identify regional content opportunities and coordinate internal execution of new initiatives. Now, I would like to give you an example of a task which I carry out on a regular basis. So it's slightly easier to understand what my role involves. So, for example, after identifying a title with a very strong commercial potential and its ability to uh, resonate with audiences, I make sure that distributors and teams in individual countries, they have the opportunity to co coordinate with each other, cooperate, sorry, with each other, uh, and in order to maximize that particular content. So if there is an extremely popular title in Japan, in China, uh, or in Poland, for example, I make sure that I support our teams in Sweden, Norway, etc., to make sure that uh, they have the opportunity to make it available in their cinemas. And now, basically, uh, in terms of the, the core subject of our topic today, which, I look, I, which I'm very keen on focusing on, uh, which is, as Maya mentioned earlier, the impact of the uh, pandemic on the on the local title and the other way around. When the COVID-19 crisis began, the cinema industry was strongly impacted by the Hollywood studio's decision to move key US titles that were originally planned for 2020 to 2021 and beyond. And that's when it became very noticeable that those territories which were able to depend on a strong domestic slate of films, were able to maintain much better box office results, and the new heights were reached by the share of local productions. That's why during this masterclass, I would like to share with you some of the success stories from different territories, which illustrate the role which the domestic slate has been playing in the recovery process. Now, the first territory which I would like to focus on is Japan and the title called Demon Slayer, which opened in Japan in October in 2020. 
it's an anime title uh, which anime fans were looking forward to for a very long time. I recall that uh, we basically in 2019 we received the first inquiries from our guests whether we were going to play that film across our markets. So imagine in 2019, whereas the film was actually released in 2020, so it was a year ahead when we were already getting the inquiries. So obviously the potential of the film was huge from the start, but I think what it actually delivered uh, exceeded everyone's expectations and what it delivered, basically. The film became the Japan's biggest film ever, overtaking Spirited Away, and Spirited Away was hosting this title for in Japan for the last 19 years. So this is like a huge achievement. And also what's really worth mentioning in this case is that the film has had already a very successful run across other territories and outside of the outside of Japan. So during the opening week, it's been the number one film in markets, uh, including US, Australia, New Zealand, and Spain. And the release of the film is also planned in any more markets, so like Finland, Sweden, Norway, uh, Germany, as soon as basically those territories open and they are able to, to play the film. Now, in order uh, to, for you to fully understand the scale of the success of Demon Slayer in Japan and its impact on the country's box office, I would like to show you two charts. Here is the first chart. As you can see, the orange line illustrates the number of cinemas open in the market. And as you can see by following this line, uh, cinemas had to close at the outset of the pandemic. That's when we see a huge drop around May, but it didn't take very long uh, for cinemas in Japan to reopen. So obviously there is a huge drop, but straight away the cinemas, the, the line goes up because the cinemas did not stay closed for a long time. Uh, and then they remained open. So that, that line is very interesting to see. And the cinema industry in Japan was actually one of the few lucky ones where cinemas were not closed for a long time and did not suffer from a huge fluctuation of reopening and closing. You'll be able to see later on that this line can look in a very different way in other markets. Now, the blue line illustrates the box office results. And you can see that the line gets to zero, obviously, when uh, cinemas were closed. And then when cinemas reopened, the, rec the recovery is actually quite slow. And so the COVID-19 related, COVID related restrictions, they obviously had impact on the, on the results. What's crucial for me on this slide is when you look at the, the, the blue line, is the wonderful spike which you can see around October, November. And basically that's when Demon Slayer released and like the, the numbers went up significantly. That's a very positive sign. Now, here is the second chart, which I wanted to, to talk to you about. It also shows the unprecedented success of Demon Slayer, but just in a slightly different context. So basically we have here three different lines representing three different years. So obviously the blue is 2019, red is 2020, and green is 2021. And obviously in a similar way to the previous chart, you can see a big drop in the results in 2020 when cinemas were completely shut. That's the red line. And then we can see a huge spike in gross box office when Demon Slayer was released in October. But what's fascinating and clearly visible on this chart is that the results of Demon Slayer in 2020, they massively exceeded the gross box office results from 2020 during the same period. So basically if we compare the red line with the blue line, obviously in the same period, the red line, it's much higher. But what's even more interesting is that the red line, thanks to Demon Slayer, is actually above the blue line everywhere, which means that basically De Demon Slayer managed to achieve results stronger during any other period in 2019 
which is absolutely fantastic. And this old time record demonstrates that even with the social distancing limits, it was uh, 50% at that time, people were ready to return to cinemas at record levels in order to see a title which they were waiting for. It's, I think it's also worth noting, obviously, for me with my passion for cinema, that this was challenging time and this was a huge demand and actually cinemas were able to accommodate and, and ready to do that. So they coped with the massively increased demand during those times when restrictions were in place. So overall, that's very interesting. And as we're on the subject of how important individual titles are in driving market attendance volumes, I think it's impossible not to mention another extremely important Asian market, China. So a Chinese title which achieved historical results is called Detective Chinatown 3. It opened in February 2021. And basically only after three days, it made nearly $400 million. And now, thanks to this result, Detective Chinatown not only had the biggest opening in Chinese history, but it's a film which had the biggest opening ever in a single market. So basically, there is no film which opened on bigger numbers ever than Detective Chinatown. This number used to be... this title used to be held by Avengers Endgame in North America, but obviously, thanks to Detective Chinatown, it's no longer the case. Now, I would like to show you those two similar charts which we were looking at when we were talking about Japan. So in a similar way, Orange Line shows you a number of cinemas open. And as you can see on this chart, the period when cinemas were closed, is actually much longer in China than it was in Japan. Like the, the red line gets to zero and stays on zero for longer. In the same way as with the Japanese chart, the blue line indicates the market box office. You can see a huge spike in the results achieved uh, in February, thanks to Detective Chinatown in February. So basically it's that one last spike, which you can see on this chart. However, what's very interesting on this chart is that there are actually multiple spikes. So it's not like it's, you know, the, the blue line is on the bottom, bottom, and then suddenly we have the release of the of Detective Chinatown and the line goes massively up. You can see that there were moments when the Chinese market was performing extremely well. And so the spike in, at the end of August, that was achieved thanks to a local war movie, The 800. And there is another interesting stat related to that film, The 800, because it's the world's highest grossing title of 2020. And then at the beginning of October, there was a week-long national day holiday in China. And that was actually a key milestone for Chinese market because that's the moment when the box office bounced back to its pandemic levels, achieving the same level of gross box office as it was registered in the same period in 2019. Now, during this holiday, during this period, just at the beginning of October, two titles played a crucial role in achieving this fantastic benchmark. One of them was a comedy called My People, My Homeland. And then the second one was animation, Legend of Deification. And it's interesting to, to note that in consequence of those two releases, during the first week of October, 96% of gross box office uh, in China was actually made by local films. And finally, the, the, the last spike, which I haven't mentioned so far, that was in January and was generated mainly by two new local releases, A Little Red Flower and Warm Hug. So, this chart proves that the right mix of competitive new local titles can create a big demand. Now, here on this chart, similarly to, to the other one, like where you see those three different years aligned with each other so you can compare them, you can see that basically the, there is a huge spike of the green line 
uh, that shows you that Detective Chinatown 3 performed extremely well considering the level of the business doable during the pandemic. But it also was a huge success even in comparison with 2019. And what's interesting on this slide is that when you see all three years alongside each other on this chart, on this chart, it shows that the reliable stream of local content has allowed China to maintain something close to pre-pandemic attendance levels since quarter four, 2020. And that's closer than most or any other markets were potentially able to achieve in spite of a reduction in available international Hollywood product. And then, so having all of these great results in mind in China, actually it wasn't a surprise to see the announcement that China overtook North America as world's biggest box office in 2020. And then, so obviously, as I previously mentioned that the reliable stream of local content helped mitigate the impact of a reduction in available international Hollywood product in China, when, we, when considering European territories, Denmark would be one of the best examples of this trend because Danish movies made nearly 50 million uh, in 2020, which is actually 5 million more than, than a year before. And just like, let me rephrase this piece of information so it's uh, easier to understand it. Basically, Danish films made more money in 2020 than in 2019, when uh, 2020 was obviously a year of a pandemic. So this is like a huge success of, of Danish films. In consequence, uh, Denmark is a country which had one of the lowest box office drop in Europe in 2020 in comparison with 2019. So you can see how much those local titles in Denmark supported the, the market overall. And then I would expect that all of you heard about the title which contributed to this positive trend in Denmark as it's a movie which won an Oscar in the best uh, international film category. And also the director of the film, Thomas Winterberg, was nominated for best director. Another round uh, is the clear number one among a handful of national titles that saved the Danish cinema year in 2020 and mitigated COVID-19 uh, impact on cinema going as it was the fourth best-selling Danish film in 20 years. Now, the role of local um, content played in uh, Denmark in 2020 is outstanding, but in general, all the Nordic countries are considered as markets with very strong presence of domestic titles, even, even during the regular times. And we could see the positive impact of the strength also throughout the pandemic. And now, uh, Borning 3, which is often introduced as Norwegian Fast and Furious, uh, is a great example of a local film which supported box office in a different Nordic country, Norway this time. It was basically the top title in 2020 in Norway. And as you can see on the slide, it delivered 70% of warning to the previous installment in the franchise. Now, Norway, in a similar way to many other uh, markets, had fantastic start, very promising of 2020. There was a rise in admission, both in January and in February 2020, in comparison with 2019. Basically, that's uh, if you look at the slide, at the chart, that's the moment when we see the red line ahead of the blue line. So obviously, everyone was very optimistic about the beginning of 2020. And then obviously, uh, the, you can see how drastically the red line plunged and carried on with zero gross box, box office for a number of weeks because the cinemas had to close. And Warning 3 was released in October 2020. And that's when you can see a huge spike on the red line, indicating significant increase in gross box office. In this case, however, the overall result of the market did not exceed results from the previous year. 
uh, like we could see in the case of Demon Slayer in Japan or Detective Chinatown in uh, China. But nevertheless, the increase is substantial. So what I mean is basically when we were looking at China and Japan, the red line was going above the blue line, which is not the case this time. We can see a huge spike, but the results did not exceed cross box office from 2019. But it's, you know, it's really important that local movies registered a record market share of over 35% in Norway in 2020, which is over 10 points more than the previous uh, record, not previous year, but previous record. And the previous record was 25% market share from 2019. And Warning 3 being the top title of 2020 made a huge contribution to this achievement. Now, Local titles also made a huge difference in uh, southern, southern countries in Europe. In Spain, the sequel of a very popular comedy, Padre no hay más que uno dos, uh, which means Father, there is only one, two, had the biggest opening in the market in 2020. And during the opening weekend, the film delivered 70% of market share. And um, Padre no hay más que uno dos delivered 96% of the first installment. However, I think what's particularly worth highlighting in this case is how early in the recovery process the release happened. So the release was last summer. The release of the film was happening last summer. So it was basically before all the and any major Hollywood titles, and basically even before the industry, and that's when industry and the guests were still learning what cinema in the pandemic looked like. So actually, it's the, the release of this film is the earliest example of local products' unique ability to drive healthy business levels. And the filmmakers and distributors behind this film realized that their movie, like other, like other uh, local titles, had to primarily consider local audiences, not whether the rest of the world is open or ready for business. And basically, they saw that the audience was ready for their product. And thanks to the increased flexibility possible with releasing local titles, they took advantage of this approach. and. That approach paid off really well, and we can see the, the great results of, of that title. Now, obviously, something very close to my heart, considering uh, my origins. Now, 25 Years of uh, Innocence is a film about one of the most famous criminal cases in Poland. It's a story which was basically closely followed by the entire country because the man was convicted of the murder of a teenage girl, but after 18 years of imprisonment, the court found the man innocent and decided to release him. What's interesting is uh, that this film is one of the two titles which kept Polish box office afloat in 2020 after the outbreak of the pandemic. And both titles, were released in September 2020, and that month box office dropped only 50% in comparison with 2019. Now, so I've run through a very uh, positive stories where local titles delivered great box office results and made a huge difference to the overall shape of the cinema industry during a very challenging time. It's important for me, however, to consider the reasons behind the successes. So first of all, these are the markets uh, which generally benefit from significant coexistence of local and Hollywood titles. So during regular times, local films tend to deliver very strong shares every year. So it was very positive that we could see a continuation of this trend also after the breakout of the pandemic. And then secondly, the local titles usually respond to interests and customs of individual nations. So by portraying cultural nuances, they easily connect with audiences. Thirdly, 
This, these films uh, are very often awaited by the audience for a very long time. This was definitely the case with Warning 3. So people were waiting for it. At, they, they knew that the film was coming for over a year and they stayed in touch with distributors and distributor and producers as well through social media. And this was also the case with Padre No Hay Mas Que Uno Dos. Or slightly different example, like with 25 Years of Innocence uh, from Poland, that film covered a story which was extremely well known in Poland. And it was very fresh in everyone's mind. So film about this topic resonated really well with audiences. And as we're talking about cultural differences, I think it's worth mentioning another round as well. So the film relies very much on the Danish culture of drinking, of consuming alcohol, which is not the same in other countries. And it was interesting to uh, hear that as soon as the film won an Oscar, we could read articles announcing that American remake of Another Round is planned in the US and Leonardo DiCaprio is expected to play the main role. A lot of skepticism accompanied these headlines, as many doubt whether it's possible to translate the Danish culture of drinking to American and whether the film could maintain its essence after these changes. Then, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the impact of local titles became even more noticeable due to the fact that Hollywood turned off the tap with their films. So the, for, for the first time ever, local films were able to play cinemas, uh, were able to play in cinemas, facing a very different level of competition. This was also a very important factor behind the success of these local films. Now, things, as we know, have been very volatile throughout the pandemic, including the film slate. But this actually, to some extent, had its surprising benefits of allowing producers, distributors, and exhibitors identify the best possible spot on the release calendar and having potentially more flexibility with this area, within this area, than during the pre-pandemic times when dates of film premieres can be announced a few years ahead of an actual premiere, making any movement within this area far more challenging. And then finding a right spot on the release calendar is actually one of, just one of the examples of the increased collaboration between producers, distributors, and exhibitors, which we could observe during these releases with, within the, the work around these releases. The close partnership also boiled down to increased marketing efforts and making sure that the message about the film could reach the audience. But as we're on the topic of marketing, it's also worth reconsidering that during these unusual times and in consequence of a different level of competition, which these films were facing, the availability of marketing channels was very different. Normally, a number of films fight for its presence and visibility. And during the pandemic, it has been easier considering the limited number of premieres. Now, what are our learnings from the experience gained during this period? So the lack of new US temples allowed local titles to achieve all-time record market shares in some markets. So it was 50% in Denmark, it was 41 in Finland, 36 in Norway, just to list a few. It's very noticeable that those territories across Europe, which, are, which were able to deliver and depend on a strong domestic slate of films in general, performed better during the pandemic and dropped less in 2020 in comparison with 2019. Denmark is a fantastic example here because, uh, as I've mentioned, it was one of the markets which dropped the least in, in 2020 in comparison with 2019. So its box office dropped 47%, which is far less than in other countries. Whereas, on the other hand, markets 
which strongly rely on the U.S. product, were hit harder by the crisis caused by the pandemic. And to put things in perspective, for example, UK and Ireland dropped 75% while having also the extremely strong quarter one before the pandemic started. So you remember when I was talking about Norway, that they had very strong start of the year in 2020, that in January and February, they were ahead of the previous year. It was like the, the trend was similar in the UK. The start of the year in 2020 was very strong. So considering that they dropped 75%, makes even bigger impact and, and shows how the industry in this market was affected. So going forward, there is a sense of making sure that the offer of local and Hollywood titles is well balanced in order to make individual markets less vulnerable to challenging circumstances they might face. And now national governments and strong, well-managed film institutes and associations play a crucial role in supporting production, distribution, and exhibition of local titles. And finally, it's important to mention the difference which actors and directors engagement in the marketing campaign can, can make in promoting films. So a screening followed by a Q&A with a director or with actors can turn into absolutely unforgettable evening for fans of a particular film. That's all what I wanted to share with you today about the learnings and about the, the whole situation related to local titles and how they, uh, so how, how presence of local titles supported the industry in, 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 many, in many countries.